good evening, Orchards Church. Welcome to 2021, and uh, we're excited about uh, tonight and what God has for us. But would you join us as we just honor Him in song? Thank you. 
God, we just celebrate this moment. God, we thank you for the victory that we have received through, through Jesus. It's not on our own righteousness. It's not by our own works, but it's through the blood of Jesus. God, we ask that you would just help us, Lord, to share that with those around us, to take the good news of Jesus Christ and his love for us and to, to declare it to, to people around us, not only in word, but the way we live our lives. God, we ask these things. Help us tonight to just remind, uh, to, to, to remember, or that our desire, our job, our heart is to share the good news of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're so excited that you're joining us. If you're joining us in person, thank you. If you're joining us online, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us last week when it was only online. We appreciate you giving us that time off. Uh, it was good to be with family, and we're glad to be back and <clears throat> thrilled to be going to work tomorrow. Really. Really. <laughs> well, we just, again, want to say, uh, my name is Todd, and this is my wife, Angela, and we're the pastors here at the Orchard Church. We just want to say thank you for joining us. If you're joining us online, would you just, just comment and let us know maybe where you're joining from? Um, and if you're here in person, if you would take that welcome card and you would fill that out and just let us know uh, just a little bit more about you. Um, we're not going to uh, call you and, and kind of hound you. Uh, we just want to know a little bit more about you and uh, share who we are with you. And so we'd love for you to do that. You can also uh, check us out on any social media platform uh, at, as far as Facebook and Instagram and also our website. And then you can also check us out on the YouVersion app or the Bible app. They're one and the same. And if you go uh, in the bottom uh, corner, uh, in the right-hand corner, you'll see that more. And then go to Events, and you can search the Orchard Church in Lander. And that should bring up uh, information about our message tonight, including all the songs that we're doing, uh, all the small group questions that we have at the end of the day. Um, and everything should be right there, scriptures, everything right there. And so we just encourage you to do that. We're going to, uh, we also want to say today is the first Sunday of the month. And so that is uh, our mission Sunday. And we're uh, just praying for missionaries around the world, um, but specifically for a lady named Hannah, who is moving from uh, Egypt, where she's been for several months. She's moving back to Morocco, where uh, she's a missionary, and uh, we just encourage you to pray for her. Hopefully, everything goes through. Uh, her COVID tests are negative, and she can fly from Cairo to Morocco on the 7th of January, so just the later this week, actually. And so we want Hannah to know that we're praying for her, as well as Margot and Alicia, who are hoping uh, any day now to go to Scotland, and so let's be praying for them. And then all of our missionaries, there are, I think, seven or eight missionaries uh, in Wyoming that uh, we encourage and support prayerfully, and eventually we hope to also support them financially. So let's be praying for them. Can we just take a minute just to do that right now? Father, we just come before you. God, we ask for, uh, Lord, as we're just talking about it today, um, Lord, that you're, you give opportunity and um, Lord, the, the funding and the direction and the guidance uh, for these people to um, be able to go to the countries that you've called them to. God, I ask that you would uh, help them um, to know that we're working alongside of them, whether it's uh, financially or prayerfully. And God, that we support them as well. And God, that I pray that your ultimate goal would be to make yourself known through all generations, through all countries, through, throughout the entire world. God, I pray that your spirit would do that. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to do, uh, like we do every week, we're going to do a kid's song. And so if you want to join us, uh, you can stand to your feet and join us. The words and the video will be on the screen. And so, uh, yeah, so we're going to sing together.
The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. He was, after all, a preacher, so it is not surprising that he used scripture in his speech. And I appreciate this so much because... I'm a sucker for a good preacher, and <laughs> I really enjoy listening to good orators. But more than that, he was quoting Luke 3, and Luke was quoting Isaiah 40 when he was, in the, when he was talking about this passage of Scripture. And the person that they were talking about, about, Luke and Isaiah, although Isaiah didn't know it, was John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus. Isaiah was saying there's going to be somebody who comes first, before the Messiah. There's going to be somebody who tells about him. Luke was saying John the Baptist is the man. He's the one. He's the one that we've been waiting for. He's the one that's heralding the Messiah, heralding the Christ. And I'd like to believe that King was referencing this quote because he knew as we do, that the only real hope for our country, for our world, for any of us to exist and live in this dreamlike existence that King was talking about, is that the Lord would be revealed to everyone. That God's kingdom and his ideas and his philosophies and his way of life would be made to be the forefront of our country, that those values would be what everyone espouses, because those are the ones that we look to for our hope. That's the thing that we want to see the most, is God's kingdom here on earth. And as a church, we believe that God has given us a dream, not only Todd and Angela, but also as the Orchard Church, a group of people uh, connecting together, building relationship together. And it's not enough for us to exist and just to get together on a Sunday, whether it's morning, afternoon, whatever time, or any other day. Um, we have a calling, not just to be in Lander, we have a calling to serve Lander. And we have a calling to outreach to Lander and to bring Jesus to Lander. God says, and we believe, that all people were created equal before God. And all people are loved by God. That God sent his one and only son for them and for us to have life and to have that life to the full. It actually says that in scripture. And it says that in Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 15, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will, they, how will anyone go and tell them without being sent. So that's why the scriptures uh, say, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. You see, we truly believe that this is why we're called to Lander. That's why we exist as a church. Someone told us when we first started uh, our planting or starting the church, and I'm sure we've mentioned it over and over, it's important to ask yourself, what is your purpose? And we want to do that right at the beginning of 2021. The question is this. If, if we closed the church doors today and never came back, would anyone care? Would anyone know the difference? It's actually a very sobering question. The truth is, we need to focus and act upon the dream that God has given us, not only every day, but every week, and even every year. 
That's why over the next few weeks, we want, again, to remind ourselves about the dream and the vision that God placed on us as the Orchard's Church, as a body of believers. We want it to, to cultivate relationships. We want to plant seeds of faith. We want to grow in discipleship, and we want to celebrate the harvest. And within and above all of that, we want to surround that with prayer. So our big idea for today is we have a dream to cultivate. We talked about this before, but I think it's good to have a refresher course, and people have changed. Some have, um, some new people have come, and so you may be wondering uh, what is the Orchard Church all about? And the first thing that we're about is cultivating, cultivating relationships with people. See, cultivating has a couple definitions. The first is to prepare or use uh, land for crops and gardening. And in order to plant something, the soil has to be turned over and the weeds have to be pulled out. I think we all know that. That if we try to plant something in soil that's not been turned over, the ground is going to be hard and the weeds are going to control more of what's uh, being planted than, than the ground and the soil and the, the things that we want to, to grow into place. So if our purpose as a church and as Christians is to try to plant seeds of God's love, then we have to do some cultivating. The second definition of cultivating goes right along with that. It says to try to win the friendship or relationship or favor of someone. You've heard said, it's said that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And this is doubly true with us as Christians for the church and, and Christ followers. Our community probably doesn't care about a new church. A matter of fact, I've had many people look at me when I say, oh, we started a new church in Atlanta, and they're like, why? Why? We have 30 of those. Why do we need another? So that our community has lots of these churches. What will they care about? What they will care about is not necessarily a new church, but a group of Christ followers following hard after God and choosing to care for others in a way that God cared for us. It's in relationship that we're able to share the good news that we found, the hope that we possess, and that others, whether they know it or not, need. See, relationship equals things like taking snacks to our fire, local firefighters. It means giving granola bars to our first responders. It means putting a little box so that people can have food outside the front door of our church. It's gifts for girls in a group home. But beyond this, those outreach things, it's about relationship with our neighbor. That coworker that needs a shoulder, that needs somebody to hear them out, that needs somebody to pray for them. It's that homeless man that, that needs food. It's that person who's struggling with addiction or struggling with depression. And they need somebody to walk alongside with them and hold them accountable and help them. Those are the relationships that need to be cultivated for the seeds to be planted. We have a dream to cultivate relationship with the people in Lander and around the world. If you want to turn with me in your Bibles, or maybe you already have it open on your Bible app, we're going to turn to John chapter 4. And this story is kind of a, a forced relationship, if you will. It happens kind of quickly. Not exactly how I would recommend doing relationship. But this is a good example for us. It's a good little snapshot for us. And uh, it says in verse 6 of John chapter 4, Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. That's a really important detail, noontime. Google it later. Anyway, soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. 
He was alone at the time because the disciples had gone to the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. And she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water that he and his sons and his animals enjoy. I love how feisty she is there. <laughs> Just kind of speaks to her. <clears throat> anyway, I like her. Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I will give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water and then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come get the water. So we have Jesus kind of casually making conversation with this lady he meets at the well. It would be just a commonplace thing. It would be what everybody did. It's hard for us kind of removed from that society to imagine what it would be like. But it would just be like meeting somebody at Mr. B's. It would just be a common everyday occurrence. And he was tired and he was thirsty <laughs> and he probably really didn't feel like ministering to her at this time, but he put all of his humanness aside for a second, all of these tired, thirsty feelings aside and said, no, I'm going to take the opportunity to give this woman what she really needs. And you'll notice that he jumped across all kinds of barriers here, okay? The racial divide of Samaritan versus Jew was a huge deal. It's, it's, again, hard for us to think about, but we understand racism. We understand racial divide. And he kind of skipped over that. He said, no, I'm not going to let that barrier stop me. Then he kind of crossed the cultural divide of a, of a man talking to a woman. At the time, women were thought less than. I mean, it, it just wouldn't have happened. She was surprised for a reason because... He was crossing some major barriers here. And more than any of that, <laughs> he saw who she was. He saw where they were. He saw all of that. And he decided that it wasn't as important as her knowing about the life-giving relationship that he could introduce her to. That her knowing his father was more important than any of those barriers that were dividing them. It says in verse 16, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. <laughs> I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Yikes, Jesus did not pull punches in this conversation at all. Again, not a pattern I would suggest you use unless the Holy Spirit's really talking to you. Even then, I don't know. Uh, you might be punched. Um, but I love the truth of this conversation. I love the realness of this conversation. There was no pretense. There was no glossing over. There was no pretending. There was none of that. Jesus knew who and what she was, and he knew about her past, and he called her out on it, so she knew that he knew what she had done, and there was they, they laid all the cards on the table. <laughs> there, was no, there was no false glossing over. And I can only imagine the reputation that this lady had. If it would be kind of questionable now, it would have certainly been questionable then. I'm only imagining how many times she had been called names, how much she had dealt with in her life having this past that she had. And I appreciate that Jesus didn't sugarcoat it. I appreciate that he didn't pretend that it didn't happen or, or condone it or anything like that. He acknowledged it. 
In truth, but he coupled it so quick with grace and love and said, man, if you're willing to walk away from that, then I have the answer for you. The passage goes on to say that the woman perceived he was a prophet and got a little defensive with him. Again, I can only imagine that this was the treatment that she was used to having, having her past, her life held up against her all the time. But Jesus wasn't saying this in judgment. He was just saying, yeah, this is, what you, yeah, okay, this, is, this is where we're at. He was just stating the truth. And then he does something really remarkable. He puts her and her past on a level playing field with everybody else. All the Jews, all the Samaritans, all the men, all the women, all of us who have stumbled and fell and sinned and fallen short. And he says in verse 23, but the time is coming indeed is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, again bringing out that truth piece, the Father is looking for those who will worship him in that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who call, is called the Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus told her, and this is really crazy mind-blowing, he told her, I am the Messiah. We've been talking for the past couple of weeks how the Jews were questioning, is this the Messiah? Where is he going to be? Who is he going to come? The Samaritans obviously in the same spot. Who was this Christ? Who was this Messiah? And Jesus, if you look through the scriptures, he was not very forthcoming with this answer at all. To most people, he sort of eluded this question. To some people, he, he kind of agreed with them once they came to that uh, knowledge. To Peter, he did that. But to this woman, he came right out and said, I am that Messiah. He revealed himself and his purpose on earth. I just want you to grasp how <laughs> crazy this is. He revealed it to a Samaritan, to a woman, to a sinner. He didn't speak this plain to anyone, but he was willing to do that for her. And in that moment of complete love and grace, he revealed himself so that she could know him. He cultivated an impossible relationship. The barriers between these two, it would have been insurmountable in that day, but he chose to get past all of it, to look beyond all of the social barriers, all of the cultural barriers, all of the racial barriers, so that she could see love, so that he could plant that seed of love into a cultivated relationship, into a cultivated heart. He had a dream to cultivate. That's the dream we hope to have as a church. That's the dream God, Todd and I feel God has given us as a church. To look beyond social barriers, to look past political barriers, to look past, oh, I'm, 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 oh, they're native and I'm not, and oh, that, I'm sorry. To look past, oh, they're Republican and I'm Democrat, or they're Democrat and I'm Republican, so I'm well, sorry about that. To look past, oh, they live in that neighborhood, or I've heard about them and their past. Woo! That lifestyle, I don't know. To judge not by what we see on the outside, but to judge by how God sees something. A creation of his very own. Specifically and intricately designed by him. To see people as, as someone who he is longing to show his love to. Someone he is hoping will find love and grace in his church. The people, not just the building. Although the building would be 
someone that he has called you specifically, who's, he's placed you right in their path to cultivate that relationship with. It's not our job to save people, but it is our job to welcome them in, to plow the soil and to soften the heart so it's ready to receive the good news of what his son did on the cross, not in a seat of judgment of, oh, I got it together and you don't, but in a seat of, Sweet. 
So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sing the chorus a couple times and then we'll, we'll walk all the way through the song. It goes like this. God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever.
So bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. You want to tell the world that you have decided to follow Jesus and make him the Lord of your life. We're going to do that at the end of this month, January 31st. We're going to have that celebration here at church. So if you would like to do that or be a part of that, please let one of us know, and we will be happy to facilitate that for you. Then just two more announcements. Uh, February 7th, this, this time, this evening, uh, message time. Uh, we are going to, we'll have the message, but we'll also have uh, a time of, of a business meeting, per se, uh, just kind of to give you a record of what's happening uh, with us as a church um, in, in the financial side of things, as well as uh, the vision for the continued future, and uh, our superintendent uh, is going to be here with us that Sunday, and so I encourage you, especially in the evening service, to make yourself available. And then we always uh, want to uh, invite you to invite others and to share the message of the Orchard Church with the people around you, and more than the message of the Orchard Church, the message of Jesus. That there is hope, there is life. And if you don't say it with your words, I pray that my our desire is you would show it with your lifestyle. And uh, we just encourage you to do that. If you have prayer needs, we'd love to pray with you. If you have things that you want to rejoice and celebrate, and uh, just make known, uh, we'd all also love to hear those. Let's close in prayer as we uh, go to our growth time. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the love of Jesus. God, that doesn't condemn us. Lord, that doesn't look down on us for all the junk that we're in or that we've gone through. But God, I thank you that you, you call us to a higher place. Lord, you call us out of the muck and the, and the junk of life, Lord, to live in a way that honors you and pleases you, God, in, in a way that, Lord, benefits us. God, I pray that you would help us walk out that faith and share it with those around us. Lord, I pray for the needs of those, um, Lord, who are within the sound of my voice. God, I pray if they're going through addiction, God, I pray that you touch them. Yes, God, God, I pray for uh, if there is a... a um, Lord, a diagnosis of cancer in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would touch that, that person, that family, that, that, yes, right that individual. Now, God, I pray for those who are struggling with, with COVID, God, in the hospital. Right now, God, whether it's in Lander or around the world, God, I pray that you would touch their bodies. God, I pray for their families. Yes, God, Jesus, as right they, now, God. they may feel alone, God. they may feel um, out of sorts. God, I pray that you would just intervene in those situations. God, I pray that you would help us to bring hope to a world who desperately needs it, especially, Lord, with, with all that's gone on in 2020. God, I pray that you would bring, that you would use us to bring hope to the world around us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I encourage you, uh, if you're not here live, uh, to get on that, that Bible app and to get those uh, small group questions. You can go over those with your family or just... Uh, maybe you're talking to somebody even throughout the week and you just have some questions, just those three questions. We encourage you to do that. And uh, you can email us, comment to us, however you want to get and a hold of us. If you haven't started devotions this year, yeah, do that on the Bible app. Yeah, you can do that as well on the Bible app. So God bless you as you go, and we hope you have a great night.